agenda uh, adjustments to this evening's agenda? I don't know of any. So we'll move on. Um, approval of the March school board minutes that are in your packet. Um, any adjustments? Yeah, a couple. Okay. Um, 12A, there's Carly Bean for seventh grade softball and Jane Gordon also seventh grade softball. Yes, they're sharing it. So we have two seventh grade, one yes, seventh grade? Yes, they're, they're both, they're doing it together and they're sharing the stipend. Okay. Um, and uh, 12D, I think was six zero. Kevin abstained. Right. Mm -hmm. And Kevin abstained. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that it, John? Yep. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, otherwise, they would stand approved. Um, comments from our high school representatives? Questions for Kirsten or Sarah? Thank you very much. We'll have our um, middle school representatives present. Okay. Any questions for Christine or Derek? Good job. Thank you very much. 
We're going to move on now to um, communications. Tom? Um, to add, that we had a, a few resignations, but to add to that list, we also have um, notification of a retirement. Uh, assistant principal at the elementary school, Marla Bono, will be retiring as of June 30th. Okay. We'll certainly be talking more about that. Um, comments from the public. It's the opportunity um, for public comment. Not seeing anyone jumping up, so I'm going to move on to recognition, which I, I suspect uh, we have a. I think that's why the crowd is yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, a number of uh, people to, to recognize this evening, so George and I are going to step down to the podium and tell you what it's all about.
Can you ask? Adam Agati. Chris Gagney. Tim Butterworth. everyone. Um, I know there were a number of people that were singled out individually. Um, but I'm not sure what all those awards were, but I know there were many. But again, our congratulations to all of you. And we have one more certificate. Oh. Am I missing one? <laughs> I figured we might have missed a couple. Sorry. Congratulations. And the last one is to the person who makes all this happen. Um, and the person I have many conversations with at the high school, probably more than anyone else, um, but he does an outstanding job with this group and deserves as much recognition as anyone, and that is uh, Norman Richardson. Thank uh, Pete Dawson, the administration, and my fellow colleagues for his support, and certainly for all the young men and women who uh, make this possible. Rehearsing less than anybody, I think, at the festival and doing a great job, and they've done that year after year. And I've come to the point now where it's, uh, I wonder what I do at all when I, when I you know, see what they do. But thank you very much. We will be going into the rest of the um, school board business, and I, I know it is a sort of compelling and gripping business that I'm sure that you all would like to stay for. 
But I will um, pause right here for just a few minutes in the event that um, other people have things on their schedule for this evening. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Not as gripping as you thought, George. <laughs> Not as gripping as you thought, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is what I'm used to. All right. uh, we're going to move on to... Only the groom's side. Pardon me? Only the groom's side. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we're going to move on to um, some exciting stuff here. Uh, superintendent's uh, report. And we start off, Tom, with the uh, Cal Grant. We have a report this evening on the Partners in Arts and Learning grant. Um, Carmen Melito has taken the lead on that for the district this year um, in putting together a survey and a, and a three year plan. Um, so I'd like to call on Carmen to give a short report. Good evening. Um, as Tom said, it's Partnership in Arts and Learning grant and it was, uh, it's through the Maine Arts Commission and the purpose of it is to enhance and enrich participation in the arts. Even though it seems as though we don't need to enhance that in Cape Elizabeth, we have such a great arts program, we have even more to contribute to it now. Uh, there's a couple of people, some people I would, I'd just like to recognize very quickly, who took part in helping to, to craft what we have for the grant. Richard Roethlisberger from the high school, Joanne Lee from the middle school, Judy Ferrante and Marie Hayes from Pond Cove, Tina Harnden and Julie Boski, both parents who contributed to this. And what was needed to put this whole grant together was uh, the requirements were that we complete an arts assessment survey, which included arts in the, in the school and what's available to us in the surrounding community. And from that craft a, a three-year plan that consisted of a mission statement and overview and goals and objectives for the next three years. And just to uh, give you an idea of what we came up with after the assessment was completed, it was found that the needs <coughs> to enhance the arts program consisted of a need for dance, creative movement instruction, uh, art history instruction, additional visual and performing arts staff to meet growing demand, expanding visiting artist program, art curriculum extend, extended through to kindergarten, and, in, and the opportunities for the K-12 arts group to meet and plan as a whole. Uh, we have the first two pieces together. We've received one third of the grant. When they accept the, the, uh, the three-year plan, they will send us the rest. And then following that is a, um, just a follow wrap up at the end of the year. We will go on for three more years and and then sign off, uh, Tom needs to sign off on it again for it to continue for another three years. And it's at the rate of $2 per student that they give you. It's not a lot of money we're talking about, uh, but the school shows matching or in-kind um, dollars. Any questions? Questions for Carmen? This is really, this is really great work. Thank, Thank you. you. And to um, the group who worked on it. Thanks. Good product. Um, the next item on the superintendent's report, just a quick update on the high school principal search. Um, we are at the, the, the point now where we'll, we will be conducting the initial interviews. There are five candidates that have been selected, a screening committee of 13 individuals that included staff members, parents, um, teachers, went, went through the applications, rated them come up with the five candidates. An orientation session has been held with the interview team where they created the list of questions that will be asked of, of the five candidates. Those interviews will be taking place next week with the hope of um, coming up with a list of um, two to three finalists that will come for, for final interviews, site visits, um, next, more extensive background checks and those kinds of things. So the process is moving along. And we do have five individuals that are all currently principals 
and our, our well-qualified candidates. On the update on the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, the group is now officially incorporated. Uh, they have filed for a 501c3 status. Um, they will be meeting um, in two weeks um, with the purpose of putting together a, uh, an advisory board, which will be the group that will kind of move this, move this forward. Um, they're also, a major focus for the next meeting will be to take a look at what kinds of initiatives is, will a group be focusing on initially. Um, you know, there have been a lot of groups that have approached the foundation, um, but it's, the group feels they need to have an identity and, and kind of get um, together of what their major focus areas are going to be. Our hope is to have that information together and then at the uh, June meeting to have some of the members of the group come in and, and talk to the school board just with around the kinds of things they're looking to do. They've created a set of bylaws. Um, we've had some, some great contributions on a voluntary basis from um, Joe Groff, who has done all uh, the legal work for the group. Um, and things seem to be moving ahead quite nicely. But it is a time-consuming process. Things aren't going to happen overnight with it. Future direction planning. Um, the future direction planning team will be meeting tomorrow. Uh, the purpose of this meeting will be to create the five-year implementation schedule. The action teams have, as you know, have completed um, their plans. They will be presenting to the future direction planning team during the morning session of the workshop. In the afternoon, the team will then take a look at all of those plans, take a look at what can be accomplished in year one, year two, all the way through to year five, and have a plan uh, to present to the school board um, in June. Um, this is the most difficult part. Uh, the, the planning, um, a lot of work went into it, but then the implementation and prioritizing on what kinds of things are going to happen in the school district over the next several years, um, those will be the tough decisions. And then taking a look at how we're actually going to implement the plan. And lastly, on May 25th, we have a professional development day. Um, we have a couple of focus areas we're looking at on this day. One um, is to celebrate some of our accomplishments in terms of professional development. Um, we are going to have some um, tables or booths set up in the gymnasium at the middle school where each of the schools will be presenting some of the activities that they've been through this year as far as professional development um, so that staff members from all of the schools can take a look at what's happened and at the, at, the, at the other schools. School board's also invited to come and visit, take a look at what, what, those, what those presentations will be. We're also going to take some time in the morning of the 25th to talk about the future direction plan and what it means. Um, as you look through it, you, you can see that there are a number of opportunities for teachers to be involved, whether it be in a curriculum committee, a professional development committee, um, a, a group that is looking at how do we measure our vision and, and deciding what those indicators are. Um, all that will be shared with the staff on, on the 25th, and it's an also an opportunity to recognize those individuals who have been involved um, with the process. Uh, you're also invited for, for lunch, where we'll be having a picnic in the courtyard, um, and if you would like to, we can use some cooks. The administrators have volunteered, and anyone who would like to to help us out with that, uh, your help is welcome. And that's it. Any questions on any of that information? Okay, we're going to move on um, to our principal's report. And um, Tom, I wonder if you might introduce uh, the principal for the day at Pond Cove so that we have his report. This is uh, my annual day to go fishing in the morning um, through uh, PCPA. I think it's become a tradition that a student becomes principal for the day. And this year's principal took a little, little different take on things. He sent rules home. And I must say, if we're looking for a replacement for Marla, <laughs> I, I got my eye on this guy. So, uh, but I'm not even supposed to be here. So uh, Jeremy Almendinger, who's in grade three, was principal for today. And he's prepared a brief report for you. Keith will be checking on the time. 
and then he, I'm sure he'd be happy to field questions. Great. You know already I was picked to be today's principal. Some people asked me what my favorite and least favorite things were. I told them I didn't really have a favorite or least favorite thing, but it definitely was fun to make up the rules, and it definitely was fun to actually go along with the rules. <laughs> it was fun going to visit all the different classrooms and meeting so many new people. And it was really fun just seeing so many people have a good day. And something that weren't all that fun is, it was a long walk all between the different classrooms. And a lot, a lot of people, they were, they, they would crowd around me asking what it was like. And actually, I would, it, it was pretty good. <laughs> and, <clears throat> All in all, I hope that and it was really fun, and I hope another student will have similar ideas. Okay. Jeremy, Jeremy, you might, might want to stay up there because the, the board may have some questions for you. So hold on just a minute. Um, are there questions? Um, Jim? We, we don't normally conduct our uh, contract negotiations in public, but I would just like to ask you how much money it would take to keep you as principal of Pond Cove for an entire year. Careful, boy. Careful. <laughs> Three, four hundred dollars, maybe. Well, I get Jeremy. Did you have some ideas about Mr. Rowe's question? How much do you think it's, it's worth? How, how, how much money would you like to have if you had to do the, the principal's job for an entire year? I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> A lot of money. A lot of money. <laughs> what, um, other questions or comments from the board? What were some of the rules that you had? That's what I wanted to know. Well, a, a couple ones that were done pretty much every year were we would allow gum hat and candy in school. Mm -hmm. And one that was pr also pretty popular was we had to call all the adults by their first names. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't hear that. What was that, Jeremy? Um, we got to call all the adults by their first names. Oh. Did people know their first names, or did they have to wear little tags or anything today? Uh, usually they would know their first names. But, and um, also a couple of new ones. We had uh, a playground cleanup. And to anybody who helped, we had little cups of um, twister. Did you get a lot of volunteers? Yeah. Bribery, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you did a terrific job. We thank you for reporting, and you did a great job reporting out, too. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. A very difficult act to follow, <laughs> Nancy. It, fa it falls to you. You don't have to stand on the chair. <laughs> we don't have to clap for I, I checked out. Jeremy comes to the middle school in a couple years, and we'll be ready. <laughs> had some great ideas. Um, however, Mr. Rowe, I do, I, you know, enjoy a public conversation about, you know, uh, if you wanted to, you know, really talk about that. But <laughs> moving on, <clears throat> there's no way I can top Jeremy's report, so I'll just have to fall back. Um, I can tell you an interesting human interest story, though. <laughs> One of the things um, we did in the middle school on April 25th is we had our annual volunteer giving back to the volunteers um, tea. Margaret Welch organizes this for us. She does a great job. She makes us look really good. Um, she teaches us all about tablecloths, napkins, matching candles, the whole thing. It's great. And each year what we do is we have the volunteers come in, we ask them to put their name in a bag and we draw for prizes. And um, one of our, several of you attended and that was great. And, and one of the board members came and as she left, she 
clarified with me that she'd been putting her name in that bag for a number of years and never had she won. And I just want to announce that Jennifer DeSena was one of the winners of our drawing <laughs> uh, for the prize. So I thought you just felt sorry for me this year, which was why. Um, feeling sorry is not something we do in the middle oh, school. <laughs> um, no, that you, you won that honestly, Jennifer, oh, and we, we do thank you. Um, and we thank all of you for volunteering all of your time. As Derek and Christine um, covered for you, we have several upcoming dates. We have progress reports going home tomorrow, and in that I've put a calendar update just for um, families, and I hope I've highlighted most of the things we have coming up, but it's pretty much getting to the season of the year where if you're at home in the evening and you don't have anything to do, come on over to the middle school. I'm sure we have an event that you can be part of. Um, tomorrow night, no, Thursday night, Thursday night, we do have our fifth and sixth grade band come which they forgot to mention, and then next week that will be followed by the one they did mention, the 7th and 8th grade concert. Um, they mentioned that Chiwanki is going on next week and just wanted to um, share with you that because of all the fundraising the families and students have done for Chiwanki, um, Chiwanki, which costs about $200 per camper to go, each family's contribution this year was $47. So um, they did an excellent job with our fundraising efforts, and thank you to all of the people who contributed to be part of that. Excuse yes. me. Is there one group this year? For They're just going one. one, yes. Next year we'll be back to two groups because of the size of our class, but this year everyone will go at the same time. They'll be gone um, that particular week. As Derek and Christine also shared with you, we are doing the second year of the Scholar Leaders, um, and that is something that we do as part of belonging to the New England League of Middle Schools and the Maine Association for Middle Level Educators. So Amanda Tuttle and Joey Unald will be joining um, several of us at a celebration banquet um, along with their families on May 31st. And the eighth grade team um, had a delightful time choosing them, but a difficult time because they had many people to choose from. But as they said, those are the kinds of problems you really want to have. We have so many deserving young people. How can we um, divide some of these things out? One of the things that middle school parents will hear me say a number of times, and some of you have heard it now for a number of years, on June 1st we have our last social of the year for the fifth and sixth graders, and that will be at the high school from 4.30 to 6.30. And then coming to you that very same evening from 7 to 10, we have the last dance of the year. That should not be confused with a formal, a prom, or anything else. It is just the last dance. Um, it is not necessary to have a limousine, go out for dinner, have a date, or have any kind of formal attire. It is just meant to come and have a good time. So um, we hope, we think many of our middle school students will be involved in those activities um, on June 1st. We also have DARE graduations uh, coming up, and um, that will be on June 11th. We have a chance to welcome our incoming fifth grade students on June 13th and to recognize our outgoing eighth grade students on June 14th. So all of those things will be happening. On April 23rd, when we had our um, staff development day since our April meeting, we were really spent some time looking at, and we're always looking for ways that we can get back the information to really think about what have we learned through our own learning processes as well as what have students learned. And this year, as you know, we've spent a lot of time on assessment. I've talked about it several times. And what everybody did is we filled out just a sheet and all it asks us to do is to think about what did we do and what did we learn. And trying to really model that that's kind of the first layer of so what difference does it make. The next layer um, kind of thing, how will the learnings change my teaching? And then what changes in student learning do I anticipate because I've made the change in my teaching. And I have these from everybody, and it's not to mark them, so it's really a good place marker for us where we are now to when we get back and we do some more changes and continue to grow and improve our assessment processes as we move forward in our discovery of great education. Thank you very much. Questions for Nancy? How much would it take to keep you as principal of the middle school? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, 1.5 million a day should cover <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. Um, and uh, high school, Dwight. Uh, well, the high school is feeling like the end of the year is coming very quickly, and for those of you who travel down 77, you probably know why. You read that sign and you'll, you'll learn that there are only four more days left. Uh, really, <clears throat> we don't stop until June 19th, but um, of course the seniors do. 
And I want to give you, uh, you a few key dates tonight um, because we are on an accelerated schedule here. Um, <clears throat> the senior transition project starts next Monday and runs from the 14th through the uh, 1st of June. Uh, June 6th is when we will be having our um, award ceremony. It used to be called the Evening of Excellence. Um, we've moved that to the afternoon. Everyone is invited. June 13th is when our final exam schedule begins. Um, I don't want to take too many shots at Pete tonight because, of course, he's not here to defend himself, but I think we'll be out about 45 minutes early, even with what I have prepared. Uh, I want to give you just a, a glimpse of what the Senior Transition Project is all about um, because <clears throat> obviously I think uh, it's a great project and I'd like you to know a little bit more about it. As I was leafing through the projects that have been approved today, um, I just pulled a group out at random and I want you to just see what the kids, students will be doing. Um, one young lady is working at the Reiki School on English as a Second Language project. Another one was doing a research project in Governor King's office. Another one was job shadowing at the Cape Elizabeth, South Portland, and Old Orchard Beach Fire and Rescue. We have uh, three volunteers working at Hearts and Horses. That's a therapeutic um, writing academy in Scarborough. Uh, another young man is developing a TV station um, at a outpost for the University of Maine. We have internships at the Maine Attorney General's office, many job shadow programs with small businessmen, ranging from, well, small businesses, some of these aren't that small, um, uh, lobstering to uh, Fairchild Industries. We've got students working in Cape Elizabeth in a number of areas, at the Cape Land Trust, for example. Um, they'll be painting at the high school and at the middle school. You'll notice that the front of the high school is gonna get a new coat of paint. We have a large contingent helping John Scott get Two Light State Park ready for Memorial Day. And the most popular project of all is uh, the skateboard uh, park that's being built. And I want to just mention why I think this skateboard park is the personification of what we hope the students will be getting out of the senior transition project. They have developed the idea, they've gone to the town hall, they've gone to the town council, um, they've approached a local organi a civic organization in Cape Elizabeth and Sc uh, South Portland uh, to see about funding. And so I would say they have, I think, not only learned that they can make a difference, but how they can make a difference in the process. Um, these projects are projects that the seniors have, for the most part, developed and negotiated themselves. And I think that's a very important part of the project. They have to go out, make the contacts, um, and then work with uh, various agencies or uh, businesses. One thing we are doing a little bit differently this year from last year, uh, on May 22nd, as you may know, the United Way of Southern Maine, and Portland at least, is coordinating the Day of Caring. And so <clears throat> our, <coughs> <excuse> me, <clears throat> our seniors will be joining about a thousand other uh, volunteers from uh, business and industry and social service or agencies uh, participating in the Day of Caring project throughout Southern Maine. And we're excited about that. Okay. Sounds terrific. Questions for Dwight? We're all set, thank you. Like one plug, we're looking for the middle school parents who were very interested in doing this uh, skateboard and I think some of them even uh, whispered in our ear that they might be willing to make a do donation. And uh, the more money we have, of course, uh, the more ramps we can build. So if they're listening, um, please get in touch with us. Thank you. Thanks, Dwight. Uh, we're going to now move on to committee reports. Um, and we did, uh, Kevin is not here this evening, but we did have a um, finance committee meeting uh, during which we signed warrants. Um, we did review again the topic of participation fees. Um, Jim did a good job at collecting uh, the data that was available. Um, and I believe it uh, was the consensus of the board um, at this point in time to uh, set this discussion aside 
um, and uh, focus on things that we have, the irons that we already have in the fire um, and things that we think are going to um, pay um, bigger dividends down the line. Um, we did have a discussion of um, some potential speci special education um, costs and uh, we reviewed uh, the appropriation report that was prepared by Pauline um, and that was pretty much the extent of the agenda this evening. Um, update from policy subcommittee, Jennifer. Policy committee met last Wednesday and we reviewed the data that Jim Rowe collected on student participation in athletics and co-curricular activities and potential participation fees which we then discussed this evening. Um, and we continued our discussions on a comprehensive athletic and co-curricular policy. Okay. And um, planning committee, Marie? Um, I have nothing to report since our last meeting because our next meeting is June 8th at 9.30 in the morning. So I will report after that. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, unfinished business, um, we do have a second reading of a, re a revision to policy JJJ co-curricular and athletic programs and high school eligibility requirements, specifically, um, I guess, the adjustment around um, the, the middle school piece of it. Right, Jennifer? Well, incoming ninth graders. Right, the, the, right, the, tr the, the group that's transitioning from middle right. school to high school, right. Okay. Um, um, do I need to read that again? The, po the whole policy? Well, just the change. The change? Um, sure. Can I read that? Yeah. Okay, this is um, policy JJJ, co-curricular and athletic programs and high school eligibility requirements. And the last paragraph is, all students entering the ninth grade must meet the requirements set forth by Cape Elizabeth High School to be eligible to participate on school-sponsored teams and co-curricular activities and in co-curricular activities. Um, it is the third trimester, fourth quarter grade of the eighth grade year, which determines a student's eligibility, not the year-end grade. Okay. Um, since this is a second reading, it's actually, uh, um, it requires a motion. Would you like to make that? Do I make my own motion? Yes, you can. Um, I move that we adopt uh, the revision to um, policy JJJ. And is there a second? Susan, thank you. Um, questions or comments about this? I guess I just want to check in with Nancy. I, I'm, I'm assuming you have kind of watched this thing get revised and- Yes, she um, wrote it. <laughs> you, even more so, you're the author. So I suspect you're- Peter and I wrote it together. Okay. So, so there's, not, there's not any issues that, that, uh, that you have, okay. Um, any other questions or comments? Um, seeing none, all those in favor? And it's uh, six zero. And move on to uh, new business, consideration of the superintendent's recommendation to athletic, athletic fee position for the spring of this year. We have one, uh, one recommendation that is for Kimberly Sturgeon as assistant middle school track. Okay, and I need a motion. Jim? I would move that we support the nomination of Kimberly Sturgeon to the assistant middle school track coach this spring. Okay. Need a second? Elaine, thanks. Questions or comments about this um, recommendation? Seeing none, all those in favor? 6 0. Moving on to consider. I'm sorry. Wanted me to clarify too. Um, in the write up, it says that she's a social worker at the middle school. Actually, she isn't. She's a, she's a guidance, guidance counselor, counselor at the middle right. school. I want to clarify I didn't write it either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not responsible for that mistake. <laughs> and, and, and neither am I, but I think the man who is yeah. is here. <laughs> Keith, would you like to come up to the podium and talk <laughs> take the blame? Okay. Um, moving on. Uh, Consideration of the superintendent's nominations, uh, oh yes, okay, of uh, uh, teachers for continuing contract status materials um, in the packet that we all received. Um, we can go back to the other. Um, you have a list of names in front of you that came um, last month. I, some of you did and I appreciate it, did call and we had some discussions about some of the people that are 
continuing, and the list in front of you are those who are being recommended to continuing uh, contract status. Okay. Um, I need a motion. Getting it over that side. Got one over here. Jim? I would move that we approve uh, the continuing contracts uh, for the teachers uh, just mentioned. Okay. Um, second on that. Susan? Um, questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, last year I abstained in this vote of voting for continuing contracts. And um, this year I would just like to mention again how strongly I feel about the process that we use for evaluating teachers. I mean, I mean to say there's nothing wrong with the process we are using, but it needs to be better. And it needs to be um, more extensive, whether that's through um, professional development and training these teachers, whether it's through uh, just letting them know extensively what's expected of them um, the first couple of years. And we need to have um, evaluation checkpoints throughout the year that we're evaluating them. Um, and I feel very strongly about that. And I think through all of the professional development work that we're doing as a board and as an administration, that this has to be something high on our priority list. And correct me if I'm wrong, it is an item in terms of the uh, planning committee. Yeah, there is an action team that has focused on uh, supervision and evaluation along with professional development is tying the two of those, those together. Um, and especially with first and second year teachers, we've had discussions about an induction program and what that would look like for our new people. And, and you're right, those are, those are two very important years as we bring people into the district. So there, there is also a vehicle, Marie, that you should feel comfortable sort of presenting um, if you have more specifics or in terms of, of uh, what you just presented. Um, other comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Six zero. We're just going to move down to D again. I know that I moved over something. Um, consideration of the superintendent's nominations of second year probationary teachers again um, in the packet. And what I need is a motion. Jennifer. I move that we um, nominate for second year probationary teachers. Okay. Um, second. Marie. Thank you. Um, questions, comments? Presumably, you could just the motion to those those that are presented. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's that motion is just modified. Um, second, and all those in favor. Six zero. And I'm going to move back now to B, which is consideration of a request from a teacher for an unpaid leave of absence for the 2001-2002 two school year. And you have in, in front of you a, a letter from uh, Sarah Berman. Um, I did meet with Sarah um, and I would um, go along with the request that she has because of um, what she stated in the letter that uh, would benefit her um, that she were allowed to have this, this one year leave of absence. Mm -hmm. um, I need a motion on this. Jim? I would move that we honor uh, Sarah Berman's request for a one-year uh, unpaid leave of absence. Okay, as specified here. Second, Marie, thank you. Um, questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Six, zero. Um, and before we entertain the uh, superintendent's request to enter executive session, which will follow immediately, um, just take, uh, taking a look at dates to remember, there is a school board workshop um, that will happen on Tuesday, May 22nd at 7 p.m. in the high school library, uh, the focus of which is future direction plan. And um, I think it's going to be uh, a very interesting and um, kind of exciting um, meeting. I suspect, uh, my understanding is there's a number of people who will be participating and so on. We'll have completed our meeting with, uh, with the group tomorrow, so you'll get the feedback from that, and there'll be people from the team, and some of the action team leaders will be there to just have a discussion on a Great. more informal basis about the action plan. Great. 
That'll be, that'll be great. Um, policy subcommittee meeting, as Jennifer said earlier, will be Wednesday, June 6th at noontime in the William Jordan Conference Room. Um, the planny, planning uh, committee meeting, Friday, June 8th, uh, 9.30 in the morning, William uh, Jordan Conference Room. Finance subcommittee meeting will precede the regular June school board meeting, uh, which will be on June 12th, and that will happen at 6.30. Uh, in the Jordan Conference Room, followed by the regular school board meeting at 7.30 here in the chambers. Get that done. George? Yes. Excuse me. I forgot to put something on there. Okay. The organizational meeting that you normally have in June. Yes. After the swearing in of the new school board members. Okay. If you do it when you typically do, it would be on Monday, June 11th. Okay. So inserted in here is um, Monday, June 11th. Um, and it's immediately following the swearing in um, by, the by the town council of the newly elected and re-elected right. council and board members. Right. Um, and they start the meeting at 7.30. 7 7.30. Mm -hmm. So, um, and what that is is an organizational meeting um, for the board um, to really basically get our roles um, organized for uh, the upcoming school year. I can't believe that we're there already again. Um, and uh, we'll send out a notice to um, all of the board members to, um, especially. I'm sorry, I left it off the list. Especially to our re-elected board members who are right. are um, on the board again for another three years. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and congratulations to Marie and Jen. Uh, now we will have. Uh, uh, entertain the superintendent's request to enter executive session to discuss a legal matter. Jennifer. You need to invite him in. Um, it's always a good question, and I always forget that. Um, I don't believe so. Are we inviting anyone in to the session? Claire, would you be able to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Claire sorry. has been invited. I move that we. Um enter executive session to discuss the legal matter and invite Claire Labrie. Okay. And a second. Susan, questions, comments? Seeing none, then this will adjourn our public meeting and we'll move to executive session. All those in fa favor? 6-0. Two minutes. <laughs>